I come here today and I come here almost every day. Mildred Vargas enjoys a hot meal here at the nonprofit soup kitchen Neighbors Together. The agency serves the needy who live in Ocean Hill, Brownsville, and the Bedford Stuyvesant neighborhoods in Brooklyn. Even though we get um, our food stamps and stuff, it's still, it's still a struggle. You know, it's difficult out there. Founded by Catholic nuns in 1982 as a temporary emergency solution. Four decades later, the need for it in this community is stronger than ever. One in every five people who live in New York is experiencing hunger. Um, you know, it's 20% of our city. Denny Marsh is the executive director of Neighbors Together. We believe that hunger is absolutely solvable, um, as is poverty, and that, you know, it really takes political and social will to address um, these issues at you know the very big picture level. She says this is more than just a place for the needy to get food. The volunteers and staff here connect clients to resources like counseling, health care, job placement, and a host of social services. The head chef believes so deeply in Neighbors Together's mission. Two years ago, he left his job at a high-end restaurant in Manhattan to work here. There was a big switch, uh, leaving the fine dining to soup kitchen. Uh, but also, you know, when you have people uh, greeting you and telling you, hey, the food was awesome. Uh, so that's a kind of reward. And so far, we enjoy that. There's more than enough food to feed the world. Allison Cohen is the senior director of programs at the global nonprofit Why Hunger. Poverty is really the root cause of hunger. Why Hunger supports Neighbors Together and other agencies like it because the organizations promote grassroots organizing to change policies to improve the lives of the hungry. We believe that it is the grassroots leaders of the world that are going to um, end hunger. And so we support grassroots-led social movements and grassroots-led uh, community organizations. Vernon Jones is one of those affected people who once lived in a shelter and now advocates for the needy. It's just overwhelming not to know how you're going to eat, uh, not to know where you can get food from. In addition to the grassroots work they're doing here at Neighbors Together to end hunger here in the New York City area, there are also advancements in technology addressing the hunger issue around the world. Inside this bioreactor steel tank, scientists use electricity and water to create hydrogen. Technicians then combine hydrogen with carbon dioxide and some minerals to feed bacteria, which ultimately creates an edible protein. The microbes first have to be heat treated. What results is a protein powder that can be added to food and eaten. This technology, um, with the with our solution, we can um, produce food in Arctic, in desert, or even in, in, in space. Posey Vinica is the chief executive officer of Solar Foods. The Finland-based technology startup claims to have developed a way to make food using just air and electricity. How could you make calories, edible calories, from electricity and CO2? And we found out that there are actually... Uh, natural forms of life that can use these ingredients. Technology has captured the attention of the European Space Agency. The agency is now interested in having solar foods make this sustainable food for astronauts on future missions to Mars. The missions tend to get longer uh, when you go to Mars, then actually they would need a, a solution on board uh, where you can generate calories uh, during the mission. The mission for Solar Foods has always been about finding a way to feed the world population without relying on land or agriculture. Solar Foods is always looking toward renewable energy that's better for the environment. We can be part of, uh, of this trend to disconnect from land use. Whether in outer space or here on Earth, finding ways to end hunger is a big idea worth thinking about. Sharon Crowley, Fox 5 News.